Hi everybody! Welcome back to Dark Souls 2. Last time, we got done killing the last giant. I'm sure we should feel very proud of ourselves. There's lots to do today, so let's not waste any time. Also, fair word of warning, I'm just coming off of a cold, so if I sound odd or if I go silent for long periods, it's probably because I started coughing my lungs up again. So I apologize for any inconvenience. Fortunately, I've got my cough drops and my tall glass of water here, so we should be fine. We can use the soldier key we got from the last giant to explore some new areas. This area in particular doesn't seem to have much of note in it. Not a very nice view either. I don't think there's any way we're forcing that door open without what it needs to activate the mechanism, so I'll have to come back later. Now, the Ring of Restoration is a fairly important find for the early game. It gradually restores your hit points. It's not very quick, and it's not in very large increments, but before you find a shield with 100% physical block reduction, it can really help take off the edge of the various attrition damage you take. And given that we don't have very many rings in the first place, we should probably just equip it, because there's no downside. Rings do have a little bit of weight attached to them, but it's usually not... It's usually less than, like, two units of weight. Valencia appears to have disappeared. NPCs have an odd habit of actually, once certain flags are met, returning to Majula. As you can see, Malinche has set up shop over there. Oh, you again? Go on. It's on the cheap for you. <laughs> Everyone's so stingy around here. Everyone's so stingy everywhere. You're my only customer. Don't make me beg. Now buy something. We call this place Majula. Not too special, if you ask me. It's just the place where everyone seems to end up. Valencia doesn't sell anything new in Majula, but there are a couple things to note. We can now buy unlimited small life gems from her. For a very reasonable price, at that matter. Thank you kindly. I was hoping that you would come. I've stocked some new things, and I thought that you might be interested. They've been selling rather well, and I may step up operations soon. I'm, 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 I'm surprising even myself, to be honest. <laughs> Mullen has a special mechanic. The more souls you spend with him, the more his inventory expands. It's sort of like an investment system. Since we bought that shield the other day, 
he now sells the Elite Knight Armor set. We're gonna buy some of it because it's actually pretty darn good he medium heavy armor. Not too much though, because it is expensive. Well, I'm not from these parts. I was on a journey and somehow ended up here. The desolation here was disenchanting at first, but over time, things started to turn my way. Yeah, I've, I've got a good few regulars now. They're all strangely desperate and quite willing to pay a premium. Sadly, some of them never come back, but, but I, I try not to think about it. Have you seen that warrior lugging that giant blue sword about? I'm no expert, but that appears to be a fine specimen. The monstrous thing has a peculiar design, quite unlike anything found in Volgan. If you should speak to him, would you ask him if he won't sell it? I'd have to take another look, but I'm confident I could offer quite a price. I considered returning to my homeland, but I've decided to stay a while longer. I've started to turn a handsome profit now, and I can't bear to give it up. <laughs> I considered returning... I Thanks very much. Do come again. With each tier of investment, Mullen also gets some new dialogue. Including some about... our mysterious friend's giant blue sword. As far as we know, he's still sitting outside that statue room. Forlorn. Oh, it's Kale. Hi, Kale. Oh, hello again. You've made it. The map, I presume. Of course. Take a good look. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. Did you see the flame on the map? It wasn't there when I came here before. I don't know what explains it. But there is something greatly comforting about that flame. It seems to fulfill something very precious, deep within the soul. Something essential. I would not venture far into that hole. It was blocked by a wall, something built long ago. But it was crumbling, and I finished the job. Now a foul sound echoes within. Did you see the flame on the map? It wasn't there when... Well, apart from just... Gesticulating wildly and being a little scatterbrained, Kale doesn't have much to offer us. Let's take stock of our equipment. As you can see, the Elite Knight Armor is a huge upgrade in literally every respect. also cut quite a dashing figure in it. The Elite Knight armor is a little bit special because it is essentially the mascot armor of the first game, Dark Souls. Most of the promotional material an official art in that game features it some way. I knew you. Let's buy some stuff, including this spear. Now, we can reinforce our armor, which will improve its defensive attributes. However, reinforcing armor is not nearly as effective as reinforcing weapons, so 
when resources are limited, we should probably try to focus on weapons. some basic wood arrows just for a Up couple of I guess utility things they don't do a lot of damage but having a bow and arrow that you can just sort of aim manually is very helpful they're also really cheap so who cares now as the description says, we could use this soul right now, or we could use it to create something of great worth. Let's hold on to it for now. There is really not a huge functional difference between being a shade and being a phantom. Bearer of the curse, Nestle. Seems like we, we could always use a little bit more dexterity. In terms of meeting requirements, it's more important to have enough dexterity than to have enough strength. Because with strength, you can sort of cheat that by using the dual wheel op- uh, not dual wheel, the dual hand option. If you two hand something, then the strength requirement is effectively cut in half. There is no such option for dexterity. Speaking of dexterity-based weapons, this is the spear. I like the spear a lot. It has a very effective attack pattern, and a very versatile attack pattern. It's got a lot of range, and if you use the strong attack, you also do this huge sweeping motion. Let's equip the short bow for now because it's lighter than the crossbow. Back at the fort, we should start exploring some more. if I can make up my mind on where to go. place down there looks incredibly unpleasant, but we'll probably have to explore it at some point. The two spear hollows guarding that doorway can be a real pain in the butt. So the strategy that I have devised to get past them quickly, more or less, is to take a running leap in front of them. That way, their jabs will probably miss you. Shield breaks are very useful against spear hollows because they love to hide behind their shields. Speaking of spears, they have a unique property that lets you attack while still blocking. Sort of like a phalanx maneuver. Now, these attacks are less strong and they take le and they take more stamina, but it's a very safe option if you can see what you're doing.
Generally speaking, you should try and avoid fighting on slopes. It tends to really screw with hitboxes. It looks like we've already found the doorway to the next boss. But there's an entire other area of the fort to explore, so let's come back a little later. As you can see, our regenerator ring is helping us a great deal, because even though we've taken quite a bit of chip damage, we're already almost back up to full. have a very brutal backstab animation that I wanted to show off because damn this darkish area is home to more old ironclads fighting old ironclad safely is to just not get impatient. All of their attacks leave quite a bit of room for maneuvering and quite a bit of time for counterattacks, so provided you don't jump the gun, you should be fine. However, they can be trouble if you take on more than one at one time, so proceed, proceed cautiously and slowly, unless you know where you're going. Now, you might have noticed that even though we took some damage from that swing, we didn't actually flinch. That's because the Elite Knight armor that Hal is wearing gives quite a bit more poise than the Royal Soldier armor did. Poise is a stat that essentially gives you invincibility, not invincibility frames, but super armor. You'll still take damage, but if the blow is light enough, you won't actually stagger. This is important for heavy character builds. This area is crawling with old ironclads. If these guys can crawl at all. The hollow infantrymen up here, in contrast, would seem like a joke, but I'm bad. The spear's repost animation is equally unpleasant. Yeah, hurrah for rolling. That fellow was carrying a bastard sword. The bastard sword is a great sword. It's much bigger and heavier than the straight swords we've been using, but in return is much more powerful and has more reach. Let's try it out for a little bit. Now, when fighting this guy, it's important that we don't go too far to the right, because we don't want to aggro the other ironclad that's up on this roof. 
Also, that was very nearly disastrous because you can get knocked off of this platform into the abyss below. Buddy. Is everything okay? Hello? Poke? Oh, of course. Don't poke the sleeping iron cloud. Like I said, this area is lousy with these things. The back stomp attack that they have to prevent backstabs is honestly really annoying because it's difficult to dodge and it doesn't have a lot of wind up. Also, if it weren't for the regenerator ring, we would be hella dead right now, so thank goodness for useful jewelry. This area is entirely optional and for good reason. Inexperienced players, and me, can totally get their butts kicked here if they're not careful. Conversely, the rewards are pretty nice and the experience in dealing with heavy enemies is always invaluable. No kidding. The main reward for coming here is the leather armor set. Leather armor is actually very strong light armor, but leather gloves in particular offer a lot of, a lot of protection for not a lot of weight. And the leather boots are pretty much the same. I mean, basically anything is better than the imported set, but leather stuff in particular has really good defensive stats for its weight. Before we go ahead and respawn everything here, let's finish exploring. But that fallen giant will become significant a bit later in the game. Maybe. It sort of depends on a couple factors. Alright, that's the soldier's rest cleared out. We got some pretty nice stuff. We are now wearing all proper armor instead of weird tattery traveling clothes, so... Feeling stronger than ever. Excuse me. Heavy weapons in this game have a lot of weight to them. Even the Bastard Sword, which doesn't look that big, has very meaty animations that you can sort of tell that they're cleaving the air. It's hard to explain in words, but if you pay close attention, it's pretty obvious what I'm talking about. Hal really puts their swing into every one of them.
Now, since we were so graciously helped last time, I think it's about time to return the favor to... somebody. By using the white soapstone, we can put down our summon signature. While we wait for a bite, let's take a look at our inventory. If we're gonna fight the last giant again, we don't need a shield. Oh, that was quick. Usually it takes a bit more time to get summoned, but sometimes you get lucky. As is customary, we exchange emoticons. You can skip boss cutscenes by pressing the start button. It's usually good manners to do that if you've summoned other people so they don't have to wait. Now, as a phantom, our objective is a little bit different than what it was when we were the master of the world. Well, we were in human form and fighting the last giant in our world, our ultimate victory was basically surviving. And while we do want to survive this fight as a phantom, it is a priority to keep the master of the world, Gloom, alive. If Gloom bites the big one, then we're just set home empty-handed. As of yet, there's not really any good ways to control boss aggro. So the best thing you can do, if it looks like the master of the world is in danger, is to go and recklessly attack the boss and hope that that gets their attention. Fortunately, with three people, the last giant isn't too hard. Our reward for helping out is a token of fidelity and some souls. Tokens of fidelity are... interesting. They have a use that will become evident a little bit later. You can also use them when you're being summoned to another world and that will help restore some health, though it's kind of a waste to use them that way. Especially since you can just use an Estes flask. Speaking of flasks, if you successfully help out the master of another world defeat a boss, when you return, you will be fully recharged. All of your inventory will be repaired, all of your charges of flask will come back, as well as any spell uses, and of course all of your hit points too. So, if you get to a boss and you're in bad shape, but you don't necessarily want to go back to a bonfire, then it's perfectly reasonable to just leave your summon sign and try to survive that fight and get a full heal from it. Getting summoned to another world is always pretty much risk-free. Any consumables used in that world will remain gone, so you can burn through your resources pretty quickly if you have a bunch of failed attempts, but your souls are never in danger as a phantom. Remember the age-old adage, don't try to repost, just fucking kill the guy. Alright, now seems like a good time to fight the boss. I would recommend against going into this fight with so many souls on you, but 
I'm feeling confident in Hal's abilities, if not mine. So let's go ahead and seize the day. There aren't any summon signs around, so let's go ahead and take this one on solo. Sewer is back for round two. Had we defeated him earlier, he would not show up here and we would have a clear path to the other side. The Pursuer's attacks are fairly slow and well telegraphed, but they hurt quite a bit, and trying to block them will really rapidly drain your stamina, so it's best to roll out of the way. The Pursuer is also very tough. Quite a bit more so than the last giant. Probably all that armor. This fight can definitely be a roadblock for newer players, because it's a battle of attrition where you have a very big disadvantage in terms of how much you can take. The charging attack he does is probably the best opportunity you have to counterattack. It leaves him open for quite a while, and it's also fairly easy to dodge. When his sword glows blue like that, you do not want to get hit, because if you do, you will get impaled and cursed. Cursing inflicts one stage of hollowing upon you, which reduces your maximum health. If nothing else, dodge the blue stabby attack. Speaking of stabby attacks, his quick two-stab and overhead combo is pretty rare and very quick, unlike most of his other attacks, which he tends to spam and have pretty big tells to them. gone for a beefier character, it is possible to try and block his blows with a shield and just sort of trade with him, but I would not recommend it. Out, take the time to heal before you press the attack. It's possible that I could have killed him before he had a chance to kill me, but taking that chance doesn't seem very smart, especially at the end of such a long fight. For defeating the Pursuer, we get his soul and the Ring of Blades. The Ring of Blades is probably one of the more useful rings in the game because it simply increases our physical attack power, which is useful for basically everybody. Let's go ahead and put that on. It seems that the Pursuer was guarding another fallen giant, and this secret goodie stash down here. The Drang Lake set is very powerful for this point in the game. It offers a lot of protection for a fairly reasonable weight requirement. 
but even so, for us, it's still a little bit heavy. It does have a nice cape, though. So, if we exceed 70% of our equip burden, we start moving a little bit slower, and more noticeably, if we try to roll, be fat roll. Fat rolling is not something I recommend. It reduces the amount of invincibility frames and ground covered, so... If you are fat rolling, then you'd better know what you're doing and have a really good shield on you. The Drang Lake Shield is probably the first one you will find with 100% damage reduction for physical attacks. Unfortunately, we're not strong enough to wield it. And even if we two-hand it, we don't have enough strength or dexterity to use the sword. So it's definitely a nice find, but not something we can really effectively make use of right now. This about wraps it up for the Forest of Fallen Giants. So let's head back to Majula and try and spend some of our pretty sizable soul nest egg. Bearer of the lest this leveling up is always a safe bet in how to spend your souls. Now, I think what I want to do is dabble a little bit in magic, since we got that free sorcerer's staff the other day. To facilitate this, we increased our intelligence to 10 as well as our attunement. This gives us one slot to put a spell in and enough intelligence to cast Soul Arrow, which Melentia is happy enough to sell us. Thank you kindly. Let's use the rest of our souls to maybe go and upgrade some stuff. Huh. As you can see, we can't upgrade the Dranglake Sword because it requires Twinkling Titanite. Twinkling Titanite is a special kind that is very rare and is used to reinforce certain kinds of unique weapons. I'll be around if you make it back. What constitutes a unique weapon is a little bit arbitrary, but they tend to be very powerful to make up for the fact that upgrading them is such a pain in the butt. Check in with Sold and see if he's doing okay. Look at our new neighbors. How they fret over all and sundry. Oh, those were better days. Ah, oh, dear me. It really takes me back. Hade's Tower of Flame in the cathedral. The up the gate is but how it works. May you find peace on your journey. It looks like he's glad to have some company again. Next time, we're going to tackle what's in the distance, Hades Tower of Flame. See you then! <laughs>